Catherine was so tired that evening. She had just returned from the market after purchasing some foodstuffs for the house which her mother sent her to purchase. Being so tired, she slept so early that evening and woke up very early to prepare for school. Her alarm normally rings by 5 a.m., but she woke by 3 a.m. Oh my god, 3 a.m. since yesterday? She exclaimed. In order to keep herself busy, she picked up her phone and started going through some unanswered chats on her social media platforms. As she was scrolling through, she saw a post that caught her attention. It was posted on her school's group which had been formed online by her class prefect. The post was all about a scholarship examination which is open to all SS3 students in her community where she resides. When she got to school the next day, she met with her class prefect for more information and to know how true the post was. It was properly explained to her, but she isn't so sure. So she read the post again to check on the website herself. Fortunately, it is real. A big company in her community had made an arrangement with a university in France to sponsor the 10 best students for free if they perform very well in the examination they scheduled to set for the students. As soon as the closing bell was rung, Catherine hurried home to inform her parents about the scholarship examination, because an application for it will expire that week. Daddy, mummy, she said with a cool voice. Yes, dear, her mother replied. We are with you, our dear daughter. I hope everything is all right? Her father questioned. Everything is okay. It's just that. She breaks her speech to get them more inclined to listen. Yes, we are with you. Talk to us, her father responded. This company in our community has begun something very important, and it's so nice for students. For the first time, they are setting a scholarship examination for students in secondary school. They had been doing this for students in tertiary institutions in our state, but this time, they want to extend helping hands to schools in our community, she said with a low voice. Catherine quickly opened the post on her class group and the company's website as well. But parents being parents are not so sure of the news yet. Because they had only heard of the tertiary scholarship, they have never heard of that of students in secondary school. The next day, they went to see Catherine's principal for more verification. Fortunately, the principal is aware of the news, but being the first time something of such is occurring in their community, she had not posted it on the school's notice board. She was planning to do so on the day Catherine's parents visited. Good day, Ma. Catherine's parents greeted the principal. Good day, sir and Ma. Oh. Catherine's parents, you hardly visit our school. I hope everything is okay. The last time you visited was two years ago. The principal replied in a friendly manner. Ha 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 ha. You are right, principal. However, keep in mind that we have not forgotten you. We are just so hooked up nowadays. They said while laughing. Anyway, everyone is so hooked up. What about me? When last did I visit you? Ha 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 ha. They all cheered and laughed together. M. Principal, we are here to verify one important information. Catherine told us about a scholarship examination coming up in this community. We want to know how true it is. That is why we are here. Her father said with all seriousness as you can see the look on his face. Her mother folds her hands together keenly staring and awaiting the principal's response. You are actually correct. The Ministry of Education sent us the information and the company has brought posters that each school should post on their notice boards. It is available for only SS3 students. And your daughter Catherine is eligible to partake of the examination. I have it in mind to post the information on the notice board today. Because I received the news two days ago, I was still verifying that is why I have not posted it. But now that I have confirmed from the company directly, and the Ministry of Education. I will post it today. The principal responded with a smile on her face because she is happy about the news being it the first time such a thing is occurring in her community. Wonderful, Catherine's mother exclaimed. Thank God. They didn't ignore us this time. She continued. Principal, we want to say thank you very much for this information. We are indeed very grateful. We will be on our way home now. Her father responded while smiling. It was just a week to go and the examination will take place. Catherine's parents called her to give her words of advice. My dear daughter, you know you have not written this kind of exam before, so you have to study very hard. This is more than WAEC and NECO and even JAMB. 
because if you pass, you are going to France. Her father encouraged her. Catherine, 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 how many times did I call you? Her mum asked. Trice, you know you have never come first in class. Not even fourth. You always roam around fifth to tenth position, and... Oh mum, be kind for once. I know that any time you want to advise me you must first accuse me. Do you know if this is a logic exam and not exactly in line with our school curriculum? Catherine entered in between her mum's speech while frowning. If you don't read, you will fail. Her mum replied. She nodded her head to signify a positive response to the advice. She is very good at answering exams in her own words, rather than stating word for word from the textbook. Days passed and it came to the day of the examination. She went prepared to the best of her ability. She read all subjects related to her department, art. She went into the hall with a calculator, knowing fully well that maths is a compulsory subject even though she is an art student. Fortunately, the exam questions are logical. They are not set according to the school's curriculum. They are mostly about current affairs in the nation and the international community. She smiled as she marked the answer she knows best. Most of the answers are so familiar with her because she often listens to FM and watches the news. On TV at home. Days passed, weeks passed, and the results were finally out. She checked her score online and saw her status that she has been selected to go to the university. In France. She cleaned her eyes properly to see it again, if it is true or false. What? Me Catherine to France. She couldn't keep it to herself after checking the result, online in her room. She quickly ran to tell her parents in the parlor about the news. They yelled in joy and celebrated throughout the night. The 10 students who qualified for the trip and who had won the scholarship were given their visa by the company just a few weeks after they had qualified. Catherine burst out in tears of joy as she was so happy. She just didn't believe one day she would leave the country. They flew from the international airport in her country in Africa and arrived in France. Being so pressed, the students were directed to go to the restroom in the airport to ease themselves. Since they were of age, they went in groups to the restroom. Due to that, they didn't return to the waiting session at the same time. It was getting darker and Catherine was the last to leave the restroom. In order to look for them, she began asking anyone she sees on the way so that they would direct her to where her colleagues were sitting. As she was asking, she met a Frenchman who is well dressed. She asked him the way, but the young man admires her neatness, decency and her manner of approach. He knows the way, but he was just asking her questions about her and how she came to France. Catherine had to hurry him up to direct her to the place where the students were sitting. Instead, the man insisted on taking a walk with her slowly in order to ask her more questions. All his life, he had always wanted to marry a woman from Africa. In his heart, he can marry Catherine later on. But it's not yet time to let her know of that act. They finally got to where the students were. Catherine thanked the young man a lot for his kind assistance. Where have you been all this while? We have been waiting for you. We were almost on our way to check on you, if you were still in the restroom. Were you on the burrow? I'm so sorry, I lost my way. The young man you saw me with just now is the one who helped me to find my way here. She explained politely. Catherine, Catherine, don't tell me he was trying to know you more. One of them tried to make fun of her. All right students, now that everyone is here, we may depart. The bus is ready to take us to the hotel where you will lodge, the school representative said. They all departed to the hotel. As they go through the smooth roads, the students were admiring the beautiful city of France, precisely Paris. They were welcomed by the receptionist and were shown their various rooms. Catherine and her roommate were having conversation about the beautiful places they saw on their way and how smooth their roads are. Suddenly, her phone rang. It was the young man who accompanied her to the waiting session in the airport. Catherine, Catherine, should I guess who is calling you? Afwoma, her roommate said while smiling and hailing her. Abba, leave me, Jared. Hold your own for their oh, Catherine said in pidgin. I no talk, na him na. Catherine, na you day reino. Afwoma mocked in pidgin. Abba, leave me, make I answer my call. I day come. Catherine replied while smiling. Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? 
in fine, and do, in good. I hope you are enjoying your first night in France. Yes, France is such a beautiful place. I can come show you guys the way to the university that offered you a scholarship. Never mind, the school had sent us a representative who would take us there. Thanks for your concern. We are departing by 1 p.m. tomorrow. We are given time to rest because of the journey from Africa. So we would be leaving in the afternoon. I will not like you to come. My colleagues will laugh at me. Maybe some other time. Thanks. Bye. The next day, Catherine and her friends departed to the university accommodation. The young man called her again that evening to find out if they're okay. From word to word, they found out that they are both from the same religion. Chapter 5 Catherine had always wanted to marry a man from abroad if it is possible, but she didn't make it a must-do in her heart. It was only a desire, because she really dreamt of traveling to see new places, and France is not an exemption. She knows that waiting too long for a man from overseas to find her for marriage is gambling with her. Marriage ambition, that is why this is a crucial decision for her to make. Now she has to decide as soon as possible because if she missed this opportunity, it may hurt her for life or may make her happy for life. She had vowed to herself not to snappily marry any man that come here way but this seems quite controversial for her that she find herself in both end. Her intention of traveling to France is for her studies but this opportunity may still come later as long as she is already residing in the country. But on a second thought, she had to do her own underground studies and findings. She had earlier understood that they are both from the same denomination, but that's not enough to conclude on marrying someone who just met her accidentally. Marriage is not what she came for at the moment. That's a later goal for her towards final year. She had to decline the offer to avoid distractions at the moment. The only thing she didn't decline was his kind acts at the airport and the fact that they have the same belief. The man was a bit sad, but there's nothing he could do about it. He had to keep strong and move on. Three years later, they had a large gathering and both met at the arena. When she was buying snacks and a cup of coffee from a canteen, they were very happy that day because it's been a while. How have you been settling in and how is your course going? Henry asked happily. Very all right. God has been there for us. Thanks for your assistance back then. Oh, never mind. That's all past. Everyone is thinking of the way forward in life, not backward. Yeah, that's true. All right. I got to go now as I'm running late already. Okay. Have a nice day. Tomorrow is another day of the gathering. I might coincidentally see you again. Ha 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 ha. They both laughed and departed the scene. The next day, Henry stood at the canteen area hoping to see Catherine, his good old friend. Fortunately, he did. He didn't waste time to inquire about her marital decisions and goals in life. It somewhat aligned and they became acquainted much better. Fortunately for Henry, Catherine is almost graduating and that prompted them to start understanding each other better to see if they are compatible for marriage. After three months in, they found out they are. The journey to Nigeria seems faster than my flight to France, Catherine said. Yes, dear, you know coming to France was your first time and coming back would be your second time undergoing such journey. I have also felt this way and coming to Nigeria seems far from me, but I know our journey back to Paris will seem shorter. It's always like that, Henry said with a smile all over his face. I missed you guys so much. They all hugged each other. Oh, Catherine, my dear daughter, I missed you so much. Look how big you've become. You are now a woman. Just take a look at my daughter. Is this you? You are looking so beautiful, her mom said while hugging her tightly as they both shed tears of joy. Welcome home, my dear daughter. I almost didn't recognize you. See how a woman you've become. This is wonderful. We thank God for journey mercies. By the way, who is this young man that came with you? Is he our in-law to be you told us on video call? Her father asked while smiling, knowing her response would be yes, coupled with the fact that he is a man from a country he admires. Yes, daddy. He is Henry, the man of my dreams. I told you about. We are hoping to do the wedding before we return to France. 
I hope you now have our family bride price list ready. You know we've talked about this before. Catherine said to his father with smile all over her face. Good afternoon, sir and ma. I'm Henry, your daughter's fiance. Remember the day, Catherine, and I had a video call with you. Henry asked politely. Oh, yes, you told me you would be coming together. I almost forgot. Welcome, my son. I'm so happy to have you in my house. Oyibo man with swag, he answered as a typical Nigerian man from the Yerhobo tribe of Delta State. Come in, my son. This is your room. Here is the bathroom and toilet, her mom said. Days passed and they went to court to register their marriage. Henry's father was represented and they paid the bride price and had a light reception. Two days later, they went to the airport and were set to fly back to France. They were so happy, but tears upon tears were shed from Catherine's eyes and her parents' eyes as she is their only daughter. They wondered when next they will see again, but they had no choice. Their daughter must surely leave the house to settle for her own family. The four of them, Henry, Catherine, and her parents hugged each other tightly before they finally waved goodbye to each other. They lived happily ever after and gave birth to beautiful kids in France. The End